it actually helps. There is a magical property to that hat, but... Hello, carnivore hunters. This is Doug. Hey, and this is Rick. Uh, hey, Doug. Yeah. I, I've been uh, working with the deaf and blind. And do you know what the what the uh, hand signal is for for deaf people for milk? Uh, do you know Do you know what this? that is? It's. Do you know what it is for pasteurized milk? What? It's pasteurized. No. <laughs> oh <Ta -da>. wow! My, <laughs> my grandson does this. I think is what they what they teach toddlers. But uh, <laughs> wow! All right. Uh, so, guys, we do have some experience we wanted to share with you uh, to help you guys be more successful with the carnivore lifestyle. Um, if you watch these videos, we, we share, uh, we shared several of our experiences and the lessons we've learned along the way. Um, so we just kind of wanted to help you guys out with 13 things that you really should do before starting the carnivore diet. Uh, the first one is I've actually just put a short out on this very recently. Uh, if you don't have one already, get one of those ratcheting belts, um, has the little notches in it. It's adjustable by quarter of an inch. And believe me, especially when the weight first starts coming off, you're going to be tightening that up a lot very quickly. Uh, the other nice thing is with like with the brand that I have is called Core, I believe. Um, it's You can actually cut it. Uh, w once you lose a ton of weight, you can actually cut about six inches off, which is what my previous video was about. So that has been a big help to me. Yeah, I have one of those belts myself. And, and what's really nice about those is you don't ever need a leather punch. Like Doug said, all you do is cut it uh, as you shed the weight. It's it's uh, and and even even if you're not somebody that is changing your weight, it's it's just a very convenient belt to have because uh, you you don't have to hole punch it or uh, leather punch anything. And it, it's great belt. Um, the other thing I would highly, highly recommend is to take measurements around your chest, your arms, your waist, especially, and, uh, take those measurements. If, if you're a carnivore that is looking to lose weight, uh, if you're on carnivore for other reasons, you may not need to do that. But, um, I just recently put out a, a video about I, I feel like I plateaued and I'm not losing weight anymore. Well, I think that's, I think I'm losing the fat, but not the, but I think I'm gaining muscle because I've actually started some hardcore resistance training. So I, I really believe I'm starting to gain muscle and, and not shit. And I think I'm still shedding the fat. I, I'm just not seeing it because of the muscle gain. Yeah, and that's actually something my wife and I did from the beginning. Uh, she was pretty insistent on taking mem uh, the measurements, and uh, glad glad she did because there's been a couple of times um, for for both of us where we've had a, a week or two weeks, even a month, where you don't actually see the scale move that much, but all of a sudden there's an extra inch gone off of your waist. So, um, yeah. w if had we only been taken you know the the scale had we only been looking at that we would have seen zero progress and that can be pretty disheartening so um yeah definitely if you're if you're in this f initially for weight loss then that's definitely you'll want to take those body measurements uh you can get a little tape measure uh you can buy these it's called myo tape get it right off of amazon i think it's like 15 bucks um but uh, these are really handy because you can actually loop it around and lock it in on itself and then cinch it down in. So um, that's a good pickup. I think, like I said, I think they're like 15 bucks. The next thing on our list is uh, get electrolytes. Um, electrolytes and whether it's Element or some other brand, I do use the Element. Uh, we're not sponsored. I think we're the only carnivore channel that's not sponsored by Element <laughs> at this point, but um, uh, it, it is a great product. Uh, but there is, it, it is something that you want to get 
prior to starting uh because when you first go on to carnivore you start losing a lot of inflammation and you're so which and with that goes a lot of lot of water and the element will kind of help you or whatever electrolyte you choose or will will help you you know replace replenish some of those uh some of that water that you lose initially um and hopefully help you avoid that keto flu that i got um when we started carnivore initially i got the keto flu really bad if you've watched this before you've already known known this uh and i had actually ordered some element but there was a delay in shipping uh we had a bad storm that week and it came like four days later than what it was supposed to but and by then i was already you know neck deep in the keto flu so um i i would definitely get that before starting i i think it would have saved me a little bit of pain yeah you know my, my first couple of weeks into carnivore um i was getting the leg cramps and once i started drinking the l the element the and the electrolytes the the cramps went away so uh you may experience some of that when you first start, especially if you've been living on the standard American diet for a lot of years, like we were. Yeah. Um, and other thing I would highly, highly recommend you do, uh, especially if you're pre-diabetic or type two diabetic uh, or, or any other medical conditions you might have, I would, I would go to your doctor and, get get us your newest set of labs done and set a new baseline so that from the time you start carnivore and then and beyond you know what what the diet is doing for you so i i would highly recommend you get your some blood drawn do a urine sample and and dr barry has a really good video on labs that he recommends that that we can include up here uh, so you can go watch that. It, um, to me, that's very, very, very important. It, it's been helping me with my journey tremendously. And the other thing I would do is, uh, particularly if you have high blood pressure, if, if blood pressure is not a problem for you, maybe you don't need to do this, but, but track your blood pressure and check it often daily, twice a day, if you can. I, I'm, I'm not that dedicated. I try to be, but you know, I just get busy and, and forget, but I do track my blood pressure very often because it's, for me, it's a huge concern uh, since I decided to take control of my own health. Yeah. I've always been pretty low on my blood pressure was always slightly like in the very low pre hypertension stage. So I think it's what's 120 over 80 is what they, what kind of like that goal num metric is. Um, I was always like 125 over like 83 or something like that. So anytime I would get it done, it would be like, ah, it's a little high, but nothing to really worry about. Uh, but even me, I've actually have had my blood pressure taken since starting carnivore. And now it's, I'm below 120 over 80 for for the first time in my life. I mean, I that was I was always above even in my early 20s. Um, so, so it was just kind of interesting to see that come down, even though again, not something I tracked super regularly. So, and that's just one school of thought on what your blood pressure should be. Uh, there's actually two schools of thought, and Dr. Barry also talks about this, where uh, he says instead of 120 over 80. I think Dr. Barry is saying if you're 140 over 90, you're good to go. So it, it did depend. And I, one, the American Heart Association, I believe, is what recommends the 120 over 80. And there's an other organization that says, eh, that's bull crap. You can go 140 over 90. And go watch the video. I'm not sure I'm quoting those numbers just right, but I'm pretty sure it was 140 over 90. The next thing on our list is we would definitely recommend, and this one seems pretty obvious, but weigh yourself. You know, get pick up. I prefer to pick a day of the week. Uh, for my wife and I, we we weigh ourselves on Sunday, and then we kind of just forget about it. Just Sunday morning, first thing in the morning, to, we weigh ourselves. We take our mes measurements, and then we kind of go about our day from there. Uh, one thing I would recommend, if you saw my one-year update video. 
uh, if you get one of these new scales that will actually connect to your phone and send your uh, your body fat percentages to your phone, uh, that's a huge help as well. Because even sometimes, you know, again, that weight doesn't look like it's dropping, but then all of a sudden your your uh, your body fat percentage is going down, even though the, the the full number on the scale is not necessarily going down. That's something you're definitely going to see, particularly if you're exercising, doing this at all. It's very, very easy to put on muscle with the carnivore diet. So, yeah, you know, Doug, I, let's include a, a picture in here um, of, of our weight. Uh, I, I, I'll, I can upload a, a graph of the weight I've lost during this journey. OK, uh, I, it's a great tool to have. Um, uh, and another thing, again, if if you are dealing with medical issues and you're on the standard American diet for years and years, uh, I would also highly recommend getting a glucose monitor. Uh, it's not going to tell you what your A1C is necessarily, but it's gonna it's gonna give you a pretty good idea ballpark if uh, if you're in some sort of diabetic range. I, I believe that's what that would do for you. Um, but I, I mean, my blood glucose has come way down since being on the, on this carnivore lifestyle. We were talking about, about this earlier, Rick, they, um, and as of the recording of this video about a week ago, uh, the FDA just approved a continuous glucose monitor, uh, for just yeah. over the counter use. So I think, uh, that is scheduled for release this July, which will be July 2024, uh, where it'll be just available to anybody who wants to just, you know, put that little that little sticker on your uh, on your arm, and then it sends your glucose to your phone. Which I'm actually kind of excited about. I I, I will kind of geek out on numbers. Uh, so yeah, me too. Um, I, I'm really curious to see everything I eat and how that affects my blood sugar. Um, yep. You know, and I, it's not something I, I would plan to wear for, I would probably just wear it for a month and then, and then go on with my life. Cause I, I don't have any issues, uh, with, with, with my blood sugar or diabetic or anything like that. So I know I, if, I, 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 I think that's great. And Dr. Baker actually talks about this too, where, uh, there, there could be some downsides where people try to self so, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but maybe somebody that doesn't have experience, if they are trying to uh, it, like analyze what they're eating, they they could make some bad decisions. You'd have to listen to Dr. Baker talk about it. And I, I get his points, but I know like with what Doug and I have been doing, um, I, I just want to see what happens if I eat a chocolate chip cookie. Uh, you know, see what right. that does to my, I, I just want to see what that looks like. Uh, or, or even just an apple or just, uh, I mean, I'll, I, I will probably not be strict carnivore for that month because I will be playing around with all kinds of different types of foods. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, just, just for, if for no other, just experimental purposes. Yeah. I'm so excited for that. I'm, I'm definitely getting one. Yeah. Uh, so the next item on our list is uh, actually something we got, if you saw our interview with Lee from Kent Carnivore, um, something he said he recommends. So we're going to we're going to steal this one from him. Uh, make a list of all your ailments that you hope to cure and, you know, research the carnivore doctors with that stuff. Uh, that's something that, you know, Rick and I have talked about before. We've seen some of these things. Uh, that got better over time and, and some things that got better that we never expected to get better. Uh, and those you can always add to your list later. But if you can think of anything that you hope will go away, whether it's, you know, snoring, plantar fasciitis, you know, eczema, um, any other ailment that you want to see if you can cure, list them all out. And, and you'd be surprised some of the little things that go away that it, had you not made that list, you probably wouldn't have noticed. I know there's some things that are better on me now that they, than bef a, over a year ago. and But I can't tell you what they are because I just feel so much better every day. Yeah, a, a recent discovery of mine was uh, my lipomas are getting smaller. I, 
right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. That used to be twice as big. Uh, a lipoma is just a a, a fatty deposit. Uh, um, it, it's some fatty deposit and it makes its own sac. I, I don't quite understand it, but all my lipomas are getting smaller. Pretty awesome. And that's a recent discovery. It's not something I expected uh, from this lifestyle. Uh, I would say the next thing you really need to do is uh, use an app to track your progress. And so a lot of your, your Samsungs, your Apple, they have fitness tracking programs, but I recently came across one called Chronometer that I love. And what I love about Chronometer is it really, I, I'm not one to, to calorie count or, you know, check macros and micros. Um, I, I'm not one to do that, uh, but I don't mind entering a meal into my phone or on the, and, and Chronometer even has a desktop application, which I like even better than the phone, but uh, it'll break all that down for you. And it will communicate to your Apple or your Samsung health. And, and so it'll pull all your data in from all the other apps you're using. I, I have noticed that it doesn't always pull everything in. So it's, it's a little frustrating, but I, I really get to see what I'm eating and, and, uh, and if I need to cut back on salt or if I need to increase my salt, it, it helps you track that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I, I would say the biggest one with that, uh, and I think where most people struggle when starting the carnivore diet is making sure you get enough protein. You really want to make sure you're eat, consuming one gram of protein for every pound of your goal body weight. Not necessarily the body weight you are today, but your goal body weight. So if you want to be 150 pounds, you should probably be eating somewhere in the range of 150 grams of protein a day. And that can be harder than it sounds. Um, I know early on, I was, I was really under eating on the protein. And I actually, I noticed that when I finally kicked the protein up and started getting a, around 200 grams of protein, because my goal weight's 205. So, and I noticed once I kicked that up to closer to that 200 mark, uh, my weight started falling off even faster than it was when I was under eating, which sounds counterintuitive, excuse me, counterintuitive, uh, but that's, that's how it worked for me. So um, definitely use that for those, for that protein. If, if nothing else, uh, make sure you're getting enough protein, at least until you've eaten enough days that you basically know about how much you should be eating. So the next thing on our list is uh, get some pictures, you know, get some, you know, strip down to your bathing suit or something and, and get some pictures, uh, have your spouse do it or, 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 or somebody that you trust. No, no crazy like uh, scout masters or, <laughs> <laughs> or Catholic priests or anything like that. But that but um <laughs> to get yeah. get some pictures uh front back and side um that way you you'll see that and it, you this isn't something you necessarily need to do every week um i, I do it about quarterly uh just because that so you can see even though you know after about six months on this you're going to be like ah you know i still feel fat and all that other stuff but then when you compare the six month picture to your day one picture you're like oh wait no i'm I, I'm a mile ahead of where I was six months ago. Um, so that can be very encouraging as well. Yeah, I, that's another thing I didn't do that I wish I had. And I, I strongly encourage all you new carnivores to do that. Um, uh, the next thing on our list is uh, find, find your whys and figure out what's going to keep you motivated. Um, and Doug and I have talked about this before in, in one or two other videos, but, uh, you know, one of the things that keeps me motivated is finding uh, the people with the similar ailments that I have and and watching how it's helped them to improve. And then I and in return, I hope I can uh, 
motivate somebody else to improve their health, like uh, going from type two by diabetic f- to to normal A one C of five point four. I I want to motivate somebody to do that because um, other people have motivated me to do that. Yeah. So really, that's the next one. And there is, you know, find those those people that you know motivate you whether it's so social media here on youtube or elsewhere um and, and follow them listen to the doctors and nutritionists uh they're they're great for good hard data and information however some of the doctors and nutritionists seem like they have something to sell <laughs> uh whereas you know people like us we don't have anything to, so actually we do have swag but you, that, like, you it you don't have to have a carnivore hunter hat like my brother has on uh in order to lose weight or to feel better doing this it actually helps there is a magical property to that hat but <laughs> no, just, um, it makes you a believer yeah um but yeah they you know we don't really have anything to sell nothing nothing to put it over to the top we're just trying to you know, communicate the experiences that we had so that people coming behind us, uh, you know, it's, it just help, hopefully gives them a, a leg up in their journey as well. Yeah, guys. So really all this, this is all about uh, taking control of your own health. Um, probably the biggest lesson I've learned in all this is you don't want to necessarily trust all your pill pushing doctors which is what I had for a long time. I finally have a doctor that I'll talk about in an upcoming lab video that I trust, and I'll, I'll talk about that. But you got to take control of your own health. You got to download those apps. You got to listen to these carnivore doctors and and the people that motivate you, and uh, take your blood pressure. Do whatever it takes. Whatever your ailment is that you're trying to fix, take control of it yourself. And I'm not saying discount the doctors, but I'm saying question everything. And, and that's what I've learned to do. And I, when I have an ailment I want to talk to my doctor about, I research the crap out of it and I put them in a corner and, and make them answer the, the, the hard questions. So the, the lab video is going to, my next one's going to be a good one. So you'll, you'll want to pay attention to that one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this one, that's one is going to be pretty interesting for you guys. So uh, that's it. That's all we have for this week, guys. Thank you all for tuning yeah. in. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time. I'm going to go get some pasteurized milk. <laughs> <laughs> Later, guys.